A Christmas for Bear by Bonnie Becker, illustrated by Katie McDonald Denton. One frosty night, Bear heard a tap tap tapping on his front door. When he opened the door, there was Mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. Merry Christmas, cried Mouse. Maybe, said Bear. Bear had agreed to have a Christmas party. He would never had one before. Do we open the presents first? Mouse asked eagerly. Presents? Bear shook his head. Most unseemly. What? Mouse eyes open wide. No presents? We shall sit around the tree and eat. I might even read a poem. Surely that will do, Bear declared. Then Bear went to the kitchen to get the Christmas pickles. But when he came back, no mouse. Mouse, where are you? Mouse didn't answer. Bear heard a tiny scurrying sound. It was coming from upstairs. Bear climbed the stairs to his bedroom. The scurry sound was under his bed. Mouse? Yes, came a muffled voice. Are you looking for a present? Mouse peeped out from under the bed. He had a bit of dust on his nose. Perhaps, said Mouse. Unnecessary hogwash, Bear scolded. We have pickles, remember? Oh, said Mouse. And Mouse trudged behind Bear back to the living room. Bear went to the kitchen to get the cheese. But when he got back to the living room, no mouse. Mouse, you're looking for present again, aren't you? Maybe, came a tiny voice. It was out in the hall. Bear opened the closet door. There was Mouse, small and great and guilty-eyed. Not even a one tiny present, squeaked Mouse. The pickles are from France, declared Burr. But surely, said Mouse. And furthermore, continued Burr, I shall be reading a long and difficult poem. Bear headed back to the kitchen to get the cookies. But before he got there, he quietly turned and tiptoed back to the living room. No mouse? Of course! Mouse! Mouse scampered out from behind the tree, tinsel dangling from one ear. Pickles and poems, bellowed Bear. That is the Christmas spirit. Yes, Bear, sighed Mouse. Mouse sat in front of the crackling fire. Bear served them pickles and cheese and cookies, and tea smelling of cinnamon and oranges. Bear nibbled and sipped. Mouse did too. But his tail was sad. Bear cleared his throat. Mouse looked up. It was the night before Christmas, Bear pronounced, when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Bear stirred sternly at Mouse. The pickles are wonderful, whispered Mouse. Bear continued. 
The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. Bear paused and glanced over at Mouse. Mouse took a mouthful bite of his pickle. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. Bear repeated more loudly. The stockings Mouse slipped up, his eyes as bright as Christmas candles. You do have a present for me, he cried, pointing at the mantle. You have stockings. Certainly not. Impossible. Monstrous assumption, rumbled Bear. But he was smiling. Mouse scrambled into his stocking and popped back out with a package wrapped in sparkling red paper. Bear looked on eagerly as Mouse tore off the wrapping. It is the best present ever, Bear announced proudly, even if it's not a pickle. Inside was a shiny silver telescope. Bear hurried Mouse out into this crisp winter night. Mouse pointed the telescope towards the glowing moon. Most wonderful, Mouse said softly. Thank you, Bear. Yes, indeed, Bear smiled, then looked at Mouse. Well, what? Mouse was busy studying the stars with his new telescope. Mouse? You didn't forget, did you? Bear looked most stricken. Pickles and poems, said Mouse. Then he turned the telescope towards a nearby fir tree and presents. There, peeking out from the snowy bunches, was a big red ball. Bear hurried over and pulled out a wooden sled with shiny red runners. I have always wanted a sled with shiny red runners, said Bear. Thank you, Mouse. You are... Bear swallowed. You are an excellent companion, someone of whom I am most fond of... Um... You are my best friend too, said Mouse with a happy flick of his whiskers. Merry Christmas, Bear. Merry Christmas, Mouse, cried Bear. Then Mouse and Bear jump on the sled and swoop down the hill under the shining stars of Christmas.